Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. In uh, today's lesson, we'll be talking about a protocol called LDAP. It's not like uh, you have to understand this. Uh, so even if you don't get some of the concepts, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So in the last um, session, we talked about uh, this architecture. So let me do it really quick. So there is a user using a web browser and uh, accessing an app and then um, there is a database attached to that. So this, instead of storing the credentials in the app database itself, we had something called identity service. Also called as identity management services, right? And uh, I, I mentioned that these apps will be using like APIs to access these identity service providers. So for uh, enterprise applications, uh, it typically uses a protocol called LDAP uh, version three. Uh, there are legacy versions, but I think uh, version three is the latest one. So LDAP uh, stands for uh, lightweight uh, directory access protocol, right? So this is typically used to access like uh, Active Directory, for example. So if you're familiar with Active Directory, it is the Windows uh, version of how you store user details. So in a corporate environment, you have a lot of employees and all the employee details are uh, stored in a database, uh, which is typically called as an Active Directory. So you need to have a way or a mechanism to access these records from Active Directory or um, even um, legacy protocols collect now a novel, which is a kind of very old technology. So let me add that here. So Active Directory and also novel, for example, which is again old. So records in these are stored in a, a tree-like structure. So you will have users, groups, and uh, they have various attributes and everything will be stored in a tree-like structure. And uh, when I say tree by structure, so you don't have to understand this part. And if you're not familiar with any Active Directory concepts, this may feel foreign to you, but just stick with me because as we progress, uh, it may start making some sense. So we'll have like a top layer, which is uh, the domain controller for the organization. So it'll be like called as uh, my company, like uh, Amazon or uh, Microsoft or Cisco. So that will be the domain controller, which will be uh, the top level of the tree structure. As we go down, see, so we'll have something like OUs, like organization units, which will have something like users, groups, and then printers. So in simple terms, think of uh, these things as like uh, uh, groupings, like you kind of group things together. So under users, you'll have something like, um, like a common name equal to Raj, common name equal to Bob, for example. And you can have different groups. You can have like admin groups. You can have read-only groups as well. And uh, for printers, you can have a common name of printers, right? So everything needs to have a common name here. So this is how like records are stored in a directory like structure in Active Directory or similar data, data ser services like data services. So if you want to identify this user Raj, you, you kind of um, use the full you have to follow this tree structure and then uh, give us, it's called as like a distinguished name. <laughs> as you can see, my handwriting is uh, not up to the mark. Uh, so you have to specify like CN equal to Raj, comma, OU equal to users, and then DC 
equal to my company dc equal to com so this is how you will identify one user by giving the full distinguished names this is not essential for you to understand but if you if you're able to follow it through i think that is uh, wonderful so the lightweight the LDAP protocol i've been talking about gives an easy way to access these directory services which is active directory in this case right uh, so what are the benefits of that so it, it, it's a protocol so LDAP is nothing but a protocol to access directory services, right? And then the main advantage of protocols like LDAP is it's vendor, vendor neutral. So whether it's Active Directory or Novel or any other third party applications, all you have to know is this one protocol and then you can access these records from these directory services. They support many programming languages right and the last thing is it's easy to search so the LDAP protocol gives you like APIs I mean we mentioned APIs here right uh, instead of calling it APIs it call it gives you a lot of methods by which you can search for you You can add a user, you can delete a user, you can bind a user, you can also unbind a user. So it supports various um, different methods by which you can access this directory services. So this is a, a long-winded uh, detour to learn about LDAP because this is most commonly used in enterprise kind of a scenario, which is mostly internal, right? Um, so SAML, again, to reiterate, SAML is something used in an enterprise environment, which is mostly internal. And then um, OIDC, which is more popular these days, it is used for web applications and mobile applications. So we will continue this um, series into understand how SAML is going to help solve the so this is an important concept to get it out of the way. So I thought, I mean, this is a good time to talk about it. So until next time, um, just uh, review the previous lectures and then um, we, can, we can also progress with our SAML discussions.